Reruns. A plague that has cursed Saturday morning cartoons until the very end. Sonic X? Throughout the entire network television Saturday morning run, we have had repeats of cartoons constantly. After all, Bugs Bunny has been in reruns on Saturdays from 1962 to the year 2000. It wasn't unusual for Saturday morning lineups to continue to air popular cartoons, like the Flintstones, even though they didn't have new episodes. Even Kids WB aired reruns of Zalin's Showdown on Saturday mornings during the show's fourth season on the air. And and they wonder why Monster Allergy didn't take off. And then what? After 10 years, Zalin Showdown gets rebooted? Or is it a continuation? Or I have no idea what Zalin Chronicles was. It was a lack of continuities. Shut up! The thing is, rerunning a series that has already aired on another network on Saturday mornings is nothing new. And Fox Kids was not immune to this. In fact, Fox Kids reran 9 or 10 series from other networks during its time on the air. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I'm Tunip, and this is the history of Fox Kids Something Borrowed. For this video, we are going to look at the shows that Fox Kids borrowed from other networks to fill in some of the gaps in the network's lineup on Saturday mornings and on weekdays. No, I'm not going to review the shows because, well, they're not Fox Kids Originals. Plus, this video is going to be long enough without it. I'm also not going to look at the series that Fox Kids brought over from syndication or another network that has new episodes on Fox Kids. I'm talking about Beetlejuice, Monster Ranchers, and Tiny Toon Adventures. I'm not going to talk about shows like Angela Anaconda or Walter Melon or Bad Dog or any other shows that crossed over from Fox Family Channel since, well, that was more of a promotional thing than a Fox Kids thing. That means I don't have to suffer. And last Lastly, I'm not going to talk about those shows that your local Fox station aired that were not a part of the official Fox Kids lineup. This means it didn't have the Fox Kids bumpers or anything like that. It's amazing how many people think that a Disney show or a show like The Mask or something like that was a part of Fox Kids when they were just part of a syndication package that the local Fox Kids station aired. Enough about that subject, let's talk about the subject at hand. Now the first season of Fox Kids pretty much went rerun free. And yes, I am well aware of Swamp Thing and the series interesting history. However, the show did premiere all their episodes on Fox Kids. Ah, six of their laughably terrible episodes. However, the second season of Fox Kids did an interesting expansion. Not on Saturday mornings though. Fox Kids expanded their weekday lineup by an hour. We had reruns of Peter Pan and the Pirates, and new episodes of Beetlejuice. But for some reason, we also had reruns of Jim Henson's Muppet Babies in the morning. A show that still had new episodes airing on CBS in 1991. Muppet Babies was a chibi version of Kermit, Miss Piggy, Gonzo, Howie Mandel, and Fozzie Bear. They played together in a nursery and using their imaginations to view the outside world. It's a very odd choice for Fox Kids, but then again, it does make sense since the Saturday morning version was still very popular at the time. And I think part of the reason why it made it to Fox was, if I remember correctly, Warner Brothers was handling the series syndication distribution at the time. Although I can't prove it. Yeah, Fox Kids had interesting ties to Warner Brothers, beyond the series they produced. As both Fox's Funhouse and Beetlejuice were distributed by Warner Brothers Television Distribution. I'm pretty sure Muppet Babies was distributed by Warner Brothers, as both this and the next series I'm about to talk about ended up on Nickelodeon at the same time. Another series that Fox Kids acquired the reruns for, that I'm pretty sure but can't prove, Warner Brothers distributed in syndication was Alvin and the Chipmunks in 1992. A group of chipmunks that were exploited at a young age for their musical talents that featured Alvin, Simon, and Theodore. Guess which one's the smart one? Oh, and the chipettes were in the series. Honestly, I feel sorry for anyone named Alvin at the time when this series came out. You don't get to see many Alvins that were born after this show premiered. This was another weekday expansion for Fox Kids, with the afternoons expanding to two hours and mornings? 
staying to one. Beetlejuice moved to Mornings and was followed by the Chipmunks. Again, not 100% on the Warner Brothers distribution thing. But I'm 100% sure that Warner Brothers distributed the next show. Merry Melodies. Starring Bugs Bunny and Friends. Yeah, it was a collection of Warner Brothers cartoons, but these are the ones that usually didn't air beyond Saturday mornings. Usually, if a local network aired Bugs Bunny or Tweety cartoons, it was the public domain ones. Now, Merry Melodies itself premiered in 1990. Yeah, they premiered in 1990. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. The shorts were made way earlier than that. But this series premiered in... You know what? Please bear with me. The series itself had 65 episodes and aired 195 shorts. The series moved to Fox Kids during their 1992 afternoon expansion and aired alongside Tiny Toon Adventures, Batman the Animated Series, and Tom and Jerry Kids. Poor Tom and Jerry Kids. They were like the odd tune out. But considering Warner Brothers bought Hanna-Barbera a few years after this, well, it, it makes kind of sense. No, it doesn't. And I'm rambling. After Mary Melodies left Fox Kids in 1994, it re-emerged in the fall of 1995 on Kids WB, named That's Warner Brothers, and then renamed again The Bugs and Daffy Show. But this time, Kids WB added more shorts to the series. Also, That's Warner Brothers used the same intro that Mary Melodies used, but the music is somehow way worse. It was like a lounge version of Merry Go Round Broke Down. It, it's pretty bad. By the way, since we are talking about Warner Brothers cartoons, did you know that there were only a handful of animated series produced exclusively to air on Fox Kids weekdays? Fox's Peter Pan and the Pirates, Beetlejuice, yeah, I'm counting that one, Batman the Animated Series, Steven Spielberg Presents Animaniacs, and I guess Transformers Robots in Disguise. Yeah, yeah, I know it's an anime. All the rest were live action, or shows from Saturday mornings that had enough episodes to air on weekdays. But yeah, that's really five animated series made exclusively for Fox Kids weekdays. Sorry, Cub House, I'm not including you. And three of those series were either produced by or distributed by Warner Brothers. Granted, the only other series that Warner Brothers made to air exclusively on weekdays after Animaniacs was Hysteria. And well, that was Hysteria. Yeah, I know. It aired on Saturday mornings as well. But you have to admit, those of us who saw it, saw it on weekday afternoons after Pinky in the Brain. Back to the subject. The next series we are highlighting was about 25 years old when it started to air on Fox Kids. The J. Ward and Bill Scott classic George of the Jungle began airing on the network at the 1130 spot. Why? Well, one of the new series that Fox Kids had ordered in 1992 was having a lot of production delays. Because of this, Fox Kids needed to fill a gap. And considering what was canceled before the 1992 season, Bill and Ted, Little Shop, Killer Tomatoes, you know, the good stuff. It made sense to bring in something from outside. Or they could have, you know, aired more Batman, or better yet, finished up Little Dracula. But I guess George of the Jungle made an interesting fit, especially with the other show during that hour, Super Dave. Okay, not really, but the animation looked the same. George of the Jungle was a timeless classic, and Super Dave was not. George of the Jungle lasted for five episodes on Fox Kids, being replaced by, um, educational pilot episodes? One was even a pilot for PBS's Ghost Rider, although with a different cast. The other was Solar Man. Fighting evil by daylight, going to bed at moonlight. The pilot for Solar Man was about five years old. And considering both Superman and Birdman get their powers from the sun, did we even need a Solar Man? As for George of the Jungle, the series made its way to Cartoon Network after Fox Kids, and then in 1997, it found its way to ABC to promote Disney's new live-action film of the series. This was right before ABC started one Saturday morning. Alvin and the Chipmunks will return after these messages.
School Bus is back on Fox Kids. After all that, Fox Kids premiered X-Men, the animated series, for two weeks. Yeah, there was a lot of production problems with the series. This included animation errors and scenes missing, so Fox had to delay the series again. But what would fill in the gap? More George of the Jungle? Nah, let's go with Mighty Mouse. The controversial got kicked off of television because of oversensitive people who looked too far in between the lines, Ralph Bakshi Mighty Mouse. I would say that it didn't make a lot of sense to revive this series, but it made more sense than you realized. And that is because of what was popular at the time. Ren and Stimpy. Fox Kids even admitted it in the commercials. Before Ren and Stimpy, a remarkable rodent had his own show! And the reason why that was is because the creator of Ren and Stimpy, John Kay, I'm not gonna try to pronounce that name ever again, was the senior director for Mighty Mouse. And you can see his influence in the animation style of the series. Especially with the women in the series. Mighty Mouse was a superhero mouse who swallowed Dudley Do-Right's voice box and was here to save the day with his sidekick Scrappy, not the dog, and rescue his love, Pearl Pureheart. Yeah, Fox Kids was trying to capitalize on the success of one John K series with another, if only temporary. It only lasted seven episodes, omitting the controversial Littlest Tramp. Hmm, I wonder what John K is doing now. <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. I don't want to get into that. Next up, we come to the summer of 1994, and what could be one of the oddest acquisition of Fox Kids, if it wasn't for Power Rangers, Beetleborgs, and the Mr. Potato Head show. Oh, we'll get to that train wreck eventually. I'm talking about the 1964 classic, Thunderbirds. Or that cheesy marionette show with all the characters who look like Glenn from Seed of Chucky. International Rescue is led by Jeff Tracy and his sons. They set out to protect the world from evil using advanced technology and vehicles. It's been 30 years since Thunderbirds first aired, and by the 90s, it hasn't aged well. Well again, aged as well as a series from the 1960s airing in the 1990s has aged. It was an odd choice for Fox Kids to air because honestly, there was no reason for it. Outside of maybe following up to another sci-fi show that Fox Kids just finished, the Red Planet miniseries, or they were looking for an excuse to keep Power Rangers off Saturday mornings. It didn't work if that was the case. My guess is that it was summer, and Fox Kids was trying to make their lineup look fresh with a hand-me-down new-to-you series and some specials. The series would only last seven episodes on Fox Kids, from July to the start of the new season in September of 1994. Now we jump to the winter of 1997 and the most famous borrowed series on Fox Kids. And when I say borrowed, I mean it was hot potatoed from one network to another until Fox got their hands on it. I'm talking about the big one, Erie, Indiana. Marshall Teller and his family moves to a new community in Indiana called Erie. But strange things happen in nowhere. I mean Gravity Falls. I mean Erie. Eerie is what I mean. And now it's up to Marshall and his friend Simon to uncover the truth about Eerie's secrets. Also, John Ashton is there because of Creepy, Kooky, and Altogether Ookie. And there's also Dash X the Edgehog. With the tick falling out of favor with the network and Goosebumps getting amazing ratings, it was obvious that Fox needed something along the same lines to fill the gap left by the tick. And again, Fox didn't seem to like their weekday shows airing on Saturday mornings at the time because they kept putting in Power Rangers Zeo and then pulling the show constantly. Also, Erie, Indiana had already been Disney Channel's sloppy seconds after NBC canceled the series, so you can bet that it came cheap. And surprisingly, the series turned out to be a big enough hit for Fox Kids that they made a sequel series, The Other Dimension. After all, the first series aired in 1991, and a lot can happen with the actors in six years. Most notably for Omri Katz, Hocus Pocus. Although, that was pretty much it for him. So of course they had to go with the new cast. Seriously, both the actor who played Simon and Jason Marsden who played Dash X currently have amazing voiceover careers. Also, I believe the episode Zombies and PJs didn't air on Fox Kids because it features the town folks selling 
selling their souls to either a demon or a devil, and almost going to hell. Fox Kids censorship really got strong in the mid-90s. Speaking of censorship, we now skip ahead to the fall of 1999 and reruns of a show that tied into a new show Fox Kids was airing at the time. The extremely popular Beast Wars Transformers. The Maximals led by Optimus Primal must stop Megatron and his Predacons from ruining the original Transformers timeline by landing in the past, bonding with natures and avoiding death. Lots and lots of death. Like, 12 characters died in that series! Yeah, look, the Nostalgia Critic kinda got it wrong, as Beast Wars was not an official Fox Kids show until after it finished up its run in syndication after three years. The Nostalgia Critic got a few things wrong with that review, but the fact of the matter is, Beast Wars did air on Fox Kids, albeit a more censored version of the show. Yeah, that scene where Inferno sets Tarantulas on fire? The scene kinda got shortened due to the Fox Kids censors didn't want to show kids a robot writhing in pain and screaming while on fire. I, on the other hand, have no problem with it. Seriously, there was a whole lot more robotic violence in Samurai Jack than there was in Beast Wars. But it's amazing that Fox Kids was so much more strict on shows than syndication was at the time. Now the reason why Fox Kids aired Beast Wars? Because they started airing the Beast Wars continuation series, Beast Machines. Boring, old Beast Machines. I love Beast Wars, and I am amazed at how the series animation progressed over the years, even into Beast Machines. The series lasted the entire 1990-2000 season, airing on weekdays. Which is impressive because that season was kind of a mess on weekdays. Remember Power Rangers OTO? Anyone? And with that, we get to the final series on this list. The CBS go-to series, if a series didn't pan out, seriously Rob Paulson, you can gloat as much as you want about being Rude Dog, but the series didn't even last a full season before getting replaced by Dungeons and Dragons. First airing in 1983, and ended in 1985 with 27 episodes. The show is about five teenagers and a kid trying to get home from the magical realm they were transported to by a magical carnival ride. The noobs pose as characters from the board game Dungeons and Dragons, and are under constant threat by Venger, the evil wizard guy. The show aired for seven weeks on Fox Kids, Tuesday through Thursday, so about 21 episodes should have aired. Interesting to note that Fox Kids altered the opening credits when they aired the series, not shortened it. They got rid of the narration, added new music, and added new scenes. And to be honest, it improved it. I've said all along that it is better to show than it is to tell. And this is the perfect example of that phrase. Because as you watch, you understand what is going on without being told. Now I would say that the series aired in conjunction with the Dungeons and Dragons film. But the series aired from August 21st to October 6th, 2000. And the film was released in December of 2000. So that might have been the case. But Fox Kids pulled it for reruns of the Magic School Bus. Oh lord, we have to talk about that. Okay, sorry for the still images, but Scholastic is hard to work with when it comes to their properties. Miss Frizzle and her class go out on adventures in the name of education. After Bobby's World's legendary run of eight seasons on the network, Fox decided to put Bobby to bed for the last time. But since Bobby's World was an FCC-mandated show at the time, and Fox Kids needed to fill three hours of education programming a week, Fox Kids decided to bring in reruns of the Magic School Bus in the 1998-99 season. The show lasted on Fox until the weekday block was cancelled in 2001. It only had 52 episodes that first aired on PBS, and then it moved to Fox. And as long as it filled Fox educational quota, I guess it was fine. Now there is a possibility that Beekman's World also aired on weekdays on Fox, filling the second half hour in the morning. But that just might have been from a syndication package. To replace the void left after Fox reduced the morning time slot to a half an hour. That all could have been just a coincidence. I've never found anything official from Fox Kids that said the series was on the block. Those were the something borrowed from Fox Kids. 
Back then, it was not anything new for a network to air reruns of an animated series, or live-action series for that matter, that's over 30 years old. After all, Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, and even Disney was airing reruns of shows. Nowadays, networks really can't get away with it. Not with the internet anymore. Shows like Dungeons and Dragons that felt fresh at the time, the reason for that freshness was... It was the first time we actually got to see this series 10 years after it left the air. Yeah, the internet does tend to ruin a lot of things when it comes to stuff like that. But good friends, this ends Season 2 of the History of Fox Kids. But not to worry, I still have the history of Disney television animation and a miniseries about Cable Channel's Cartoon Blocks. And no, it won't be about Cartoon Network, Nickelodeon, or Disney. There will be a Fox Kids Halloween special in October, looking at Fox Kids Halloween and their Halloween special. It's a special kind of special, meaning that it's bad. Seriously, Fox Kids is great, but their holiday specials are terrible. Then we'll be back in season three, hopefully before the new year. No promises. No promises. They got on what they thought was a thrill ride. They got off in a mystical dimension. Give the horn back to you, me. Now they're trapped Where they travel in a world of dragons, wizards, ah. and danger. Now I'll take what's mine. They're in the realm of Dungeons and Dragons. Getting home will be a real trip. Let there be tomorrow. Watch Dungeons and Dragons coming up in a few minutes. New on Fox Kids.